Look who it is! Chosen by the Gacha Gods once again. Seth. Mm, let's go. Hey, hey, people. Hey, Seth hey. Here. Have you ever dug too deep and found something they... 30 feet down. It's just a bunch of clay and wraps down there. Don't bother. Ooh, Sandy Long, who is she? <laughs> Who is Don't Sandy Loam? Want you to know. Sandy Loam, who is she and why can't I reach her? Have you oh. ever fallen out with someone and restored your friendship using quantum entanglement to retroactively rewrite history and save them from a car crash that never actually happened? Have you ever wanted to skip a lifetime of formal education just by cooking a banana? And mm, finally, have banana. you ever had a fungal infection on your arm that, despite your best efforts, won't go away? No problem. Just <laughs> cut it off. Then... Ooh, fungal infection. There's fungal infection in case it's cool. Okay. Stab a syringe filled with anabolic growth hormones right into your chest and grow a new one. As you well Ooh, know, tentacle. mushrooms are a great source of protein. I just hope you're not picky about the origin Glow of that crust, protein. What? Oh my god, I lost it. Whatever. Everything said could be described as the raving of a paranoid schizophrenic, but it isn't. It's an everyday occurrence in the Caves of Quud, which I'm not Caves sure how to say, Quid. so we'll just use the acronym instead. Cock is like the <laughs> negligent supervisor to a kindergarten <laughs> daycare. When the kids ask him if they can collectively mutilate themselves in the sandbox, he doesn't say, no, don't do that. He says, give it a try. See what happens. Caves of Quud is an open-ended sandbox roguelike which is still See in development. What happens. Despite this, it's entirely playable and extremely fun. Fun, which I define as I spent half a day with my screen looking like this. And oh. I had to kill a man for his tattoo gun so I could drink the ink, pull the cord oh. with a flashbang, and explode it into my open eyes. Why? Because in this game, that's how you cure monochromia. If pain monochromia. and suffering are the extra edge to your enjoyment, you're going to have a great time. If you're asking yourself right now, Seth, what the fuck am I looking at? It might not be <laughs> your cup of tea, but I don't Probably drink not, tea no. because they tampered my water supply. And ever since I started drinking from a public tap, I've been getting more and more of these oh. androgynous body pillows. Let's be real oh. here. Caves of Quud. Caves of Could Cock is not the prettiest of games. This is probably the only game you could get caught playing in the office and have your boss look at the screen and think, damn, my man's Excel spreadsheet looks fucked up. It's not a very <laughs> visual game. Even though there are some nice visuals here and there, you're gonna have to use imagination. imagination. And if you can't, take my Ooh. word for it that this random collection of pixels is actually a small farming community. So, what's the story of Quud? I don't know. There used to be an advanced transhuman mm -hmm, civilization mm -hmm. living on Quud, but they're not around anymore. Instead, we got mutated everything from humans mutated to trees, everything. from pigs to chimpanzees. Every Everything thinks, feels, and the plants talk behind your back. It seems like he likes these sorts of games. Like a dwarf fortress or something. Where you manage a person or maybe multiple people. And then see what happens. See what shenanigans you can come up to. Because he played that... Uh, what was that game? Cultivation game. Isn't it kind of like this? Top-down perspective. You have a character and you cultivate stuff and you manage stuff and you level up the place and stuff. Huh. Also that game, Kenshi game. It's like a big ass simulation. And then you have one character, you have stats, and maybe you could control multiple characters as well. Huh. He has a certain type. It's a roguelike, one like. Oh, this is a roguelike? Welcome to Quud. It's a complete madhouse, but hey, it's very colorful. To play this stupid game, you need to make a character, for which you've got two options, mutant or truekin. What's the difference? Mutants are genetic freaks, and they randomly mutate their genome as they level up, which includes, mm -hmm. but not limited to, multiple heads, multiple feet, multiple Ooh. hands, two hearts, paralyzing stingers, Ooh. regrowing limbs, the ability to they fly, the ability to induce a brain aneurysm, spontaneous <laughs> combustion, teleportation, oh, no phasing through solid objects what and even infinite nutrition from the sun because your skin is made of chlorophyll Ooh. so 
What's the downside? You're a horrific abomination. And if you encounter a certain holy inquisition of turbo augmented oh. race purists, they'll kill you on sight. Conversely, true to the name, true kin are humans that haven't <laughs> mutated. They don't get mutations. They get cybernetic augmentations. Mm, These augmentations. don't come cheap. You first need to obtain an implant, whether by chance or by cutting the electronics out of a dead Templar. Then you need to find an autonomous upgrade terminal, which, upon detecting that you are indeed a pure-blooded human, refers to you as aristocrat and allows you to install as many implants as you want. One character, if you die, save file deleted. Oh, oh my. Provided your body has space, and provided you did not forget to upgrade your cybernetic software license. Because even you if the world a is over, we cannot forget the importance of arbitrary bureaucratic administration. Of course. And by God, you're going it's to follow important. a strict HR protocol to get your transhumanist <laughs> upgrades. Every registered cybernetic in your HR body protocol. runs a license cost. The total cannot exceed the license, which you have to upgrade using cybernetic credits. These are exceptionally rare, and there's no easy way of finding them. And and rightly so, because cybernetics are absolutely ridiculous. Tired of your tiny, feminine hands? Giant hands. Afraid Ooh, of dying? On board, hands. intravenous AI-controlled injectors designed to pump you full of life-saving chemicals depending on the situation instantaneously. Chemicals. Do you want to fabricate narcotics in the middle of combat? We can install fingers on top of your fingers. And if you ever change... Where's that from? Oh my god! This is your classic... Twitter inhabitor, inhabitor, inhabitant. There you go. Classic Twitter slash Reddit inhabitant right here. Also, maybe your teammate in league who's, uh, who sucks a lot and chooses to type instead of playing the game. Mm, classic. Don't... I want to know what anime this is. Go to the show. This is Go to the show, really? I don't remember. I don't remember this fingers and if you ever change your mind you can swap them out for something else however amputating your legs to replace them with a set of motorized tank treads is unfortunately an irreversible process oh, personally no. i recommend you play a mutant when starting out there's not really any bad choices in character creation but realistically don't get too attached to your first dozen once you're more confident you can play trukin <laughs> instead and abuse oh, no. the system so hard you'll forget the original purpose of this game attributes are simple that is even simpler, which What's is the convenient purpose of the game? because fighting is the main way to level up. You're going to be doing a lot of fighting, and death is an ever-present reality, especially at lower levels. If I'm going to be very honest with you, most of you will reach Red Rock for one of the early quests and get stoned to death by a pack of bloodthirsty baboons. <laughs> My oh, no. advice, get a gun. There's a lot of Never dangers out there, but bullets don't discriminate. They only penetrate. This game is all about risk management, <laughs> and there's no telling what you're going to encounter bullets don't because discriminate. nearly oh, everything no. is randomly generated and you in your generated. save file. The settlements, the cultures, the lore, the layouts of dungeons and dwellings across the world, and even the pharmacological treatment for different types of disease are built completely of out of RNG. Amazingly, it actually works most of the time. The only things that stay the same are the location of unique settlements, the topography of the map, and of course, the main quest line. Caves of Quid is... The topography of the map stay stays the same. So that means your spawn point is the one that, that changes. Is that how it is? Hmm... It's quite unique in this regard, since most roguelikes don't have an overarching story. It's currently unfinished, oh, so it consider is it okay. entirely optional. If you're looking to follow an objective, and possibly, probably, most likely, die in a process. If it makes you feel any better, most players get to Golgotha, and then they quit. Golgotha. In my case, I got to Golgotha, came back, and then I realized that wasn't the hard part. What did he mean by this? I'm not gonna tell you. Throat is sore. Salt dunes. Throat is sore and tongue is swollen. Sore throat. Okay. Did he lick the salts? What do you mean by this? I'm not gonna tell you. He licked the salt dunes. 
Maybe. Yeah, you're gonna have to experience that for yourself. I'm not joking when I say this game has one of the steepest difficulty curves and one fatal mistake could end your entire playthrough. Or, you know, just hit Alt F4 and uh, never tell anyone. Let me tell you about mechanics. Firstly, overlay UI. Turn it on. Mm. I have no idea why it's not the default, but it's virtually <laughs> unplayable without it. There's a lot of no interesting UI, monster holy shit. designs in this game. this game. Interesting in their design to creatively reduce your life expectancy. Most common cause of death a brick wall because for some mm. reason mimics are level 25 and still generate where they shouldn't that's good programming just like choosing unity to be the basis of your sandbox roguelike how about rusty saw blade that dismembers on every hit Ooh. i hope you have an extra head because otherwise it's game over on the bright side equipping your severed face as a homemade facial accessory is both fashionable yeah. and attractive do you oh like my bananas God. how about being peeled like a banana oh because no for about half the banana trees in this game the fruit comes to them. This may surprise newer oh, players no. as pressing auto explore in the banana grove is a guaranteed single click shortcut to the being bananas. disemboweled. Have They're you dangerous. ever wondered about the struggle of living with dyslexia? If so, encounter a psychic master and his slaves and you won't have to wonder anymore. And why not say <laughs> fuck it, let's add a giant magnet to the game. Because stripping you of your dignity is no longer enough. We're going to forcibly strip you of your items as well. And considering most people oh, no. have auto pickup turned on by default watch as your character is forced into an infinite dance of losing items picking them up only to lose them again until oh my you God. starve to death or smash escape fast enough to turn it off you know the great pyramids of egypt imagine they could fly now imagine you fused it with a sherman t-34 calliope and expanded the rocket tubes to a hundred not too bad when you consider a rocket salvo is only 10 unless yeah. they get you Excuse up me? against the wall in which case you get slammed repeatedly until they empty the entire rack and then they fabricate and replace each and Chrome every pyramid. high explosive missile in a single turn at this point why not give it an automatic force field and the ability to randomly teleport across oh my the God. map everything described the as an enemy follow, inside too. caves of quood is it a unique optional boss fight no it is a common occurrence in the deathlands known only as a chrome pyramid and if you see ah, your screen the vibrating and glitching it's a good time to leave. If that sounds overwhelming, let me assure you that's not the case. Because every creature in this game, from birds to trees, plants to ants, baboons to you. raccoons, They're everything hostile. belongs to a specific faction. And their relation to you is dependent on your reputation with a group. Oh, if you're gosh. hated, even the oh. peaceful ones will try to rip you apart. If you're oh, loved, no. even the most aggressive members will protect you as one of their own. This applies to others as well. Gotta be friendly. Eat the fuck out of monkeys. And the relation between factions controls their behavior let's say you wear a beaded bracelet this tricks baboons into thinking you're one of their own Ooh. that doesn't mean they're not aggressive that just means they're not aggressive to you they hunt they hunt monkeys they corral them in it's the most ruthless oh. shit because there's a video of this chimp eating a monkey while oh, it's alive oh my god he's holding on to the monkey and biting oh, its hips oh my god and joe stop it me while the monkey's screaming like ah! so how do you influence <laughs> reputation stop reputation it. isn't affected by helping or killing killing normal people only celebrities much like real life if you kill a lot of short people they won't rise up against you but if you <laughs> kill a famous minecraft youtuber oh, no. the size of a small child they'll start to notice every faction randomly generates legendary characters and interacting bonding or straight up murdering them will influence your reputation so depending cracking. on that character's personal history hell? for example this is who <laughs> a legendary baboon queen. She is naturally loved one. by her people. However, she accidentally dug up some robot's dead grandfather. Oh. Probably a TI-84 calculator. Robots she also sold confidential banking details from one village and stole some shit from another. Quite understandably, these factions don't like her. And smacking her dead with a heavy branch would probably make a lot of people, excluding those that use shit as a projectile, incredibly happy. Now, the most precious resource in Quud is water. There's mm, not much of it around, water. so the act of sharing your water is one of the most culturally significant actions you can take. Your first is mine, my water is yours. Performing a water ritual will... <laughs> your thirst is mine, my water is yours? That sounds like a romantic poet, right, dude? Your thirst is mine, my water is yours. Oh, they should put that in like a Hallmark greeting card or something, you know?
bond That's you beautiful. together and strengthen relations. The factions that like them will like you even more, but the factions that don't will dislike you by association. However, sharing water with another only later to betray your brother is the worst crime you can possibly oh. commit, and even the enemy of thy enemy will regard you, the Kinslayer, with open hatred, as will Kinslayer. every faction in the game. Of course, you can always use a Schrodinger's page. Remember, it's not considered historical revision when you're doing it with quantum entanglement. As briefly mentioned, water is the most valuable commodity. That's why we don't have currency. Water is currency. We don't go by greenback or gold. We go by water. And we trade water. it by the dram. One dram of water is approximately one, one eighth dram. of a fluid ounce, or about 3.6 ml. It is the smallest unit of trade. And a water skin can hold up to 64 drams of fluid. Eight mm -hmm. fluid ounces, or about 230 ml. In Caves of Quood, we drink our currency. In this Ooh. world, poverty yeah. isn't begging on the streets. Poverty is dying of thirst. And so oh, no. you need water. Wait. There's rivers. Hold on a minute. There's rivers here. Can't you just collect the water from the river and then you're gonna be rich? Surely, right? Is there water everywhere? Look. Hmm. First, and so you need water to live or trade, meaning your currency is actually damn heavy, and there's only so many water skins you can carry around. It's an interesting system, effectively forcing you to trade valuables for other valuables and measure Salt out water, water to rivers. even out the shit. difference. But to even earn your water, you're going to have to go into the great unknown. Explore, plunder, and pillage your way across the world, and hopefully you can come back alive. It's going to be dangerous, but when the alternative is certain death, I think. I'll take my options. Survival is not easy, but the game offers you a diverse variety of skills to help you stay alive. Ooh, Each time up. you level up, you get skill points, which can be freely distributed to suit your character. Finding combinations that work is a matter of experimentation. For example, I once made a mutant with six arms with an <laughs> axe in each hand. Oh Axes my god. specialize in dismemberment, and dual oh welding god. specializes in attacking simultaneously with each arm. Each turn, my <laughs> abomination took off up to six limbs including the head and believe me oh, everything yeah. eventually me. runs out of limbs on top of that you'll run into items you don't understand these will be described as an artifact and require successful identification to properly use for example if your character is a complete dumbass he has no concept of a folding chair instead he'll see it as a collection of strange tubes strange also tubes. don't do this with stuff you don't own because in the process of delicately smashing it to pieces you might <laughs> intentionally break it and the excuse it's of sorry i was just identifying doesn't work when you're being violently murdered by a pack of villagers artifacts are amazing and offer you great flexibility often augmenting or replacing abilities you don't have with their mechanized technological equivalent these include but are not limited to instant teleportation to Ooh. any xyz coordinate biodynamic fuel cells powered by blood <laughs> teleporting to lava nuclear grenades or even a pair of rocket skates designed for their intended purpose to burn down every forest in the game. Not only wow. can you use them, but with a tinkering skill, you can also craft them. And provided you've got the appropriate blueprints, you can not only craft them, but also modify them to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, that seemed like the limits of this game, until I went further beyond and discovered cooking. Imagine Ooh, living in a world where the difference with, um, between life and death is decided cereal. almost entirely by what you had for breakfast that day. Because that's what cooking is to caves of quood. When everything is so mutated, even consuming the mutant will give you their properties. And adding more mutants to the dish will increase the possibilities of your ridiculous combination. For example, mm. I can engineer a chance to heal to full health on any tick of damage. Then I pour acid on my feet and become immortal. Or oh I can God. use a mental mutation to spawn a huge number of plants that explode when you step on them. Eat a gecko that gives me complete immunity to fire and intentionally cause a chain reaction that oh turns my God. the entire map it's into crazy. lava while leaving myself untouched. Or I could ask a gigantic sewer slug for his favorite soup recipe, drink it, and turn myself permanently into a gigantic sewer Ooh. slug that stores, pressurizes, and you can spits be a sewer entire slug. rivers of acid. With all that knowledge, nice. the only thing left is to go deeper. Many people go into <laughs> so caves much words and, and colors. Don't come back. <laughs> exactly. Usually they have stupid names like Nutty Putty Cave. A man <laughs> actually Nutty died putty. there. There's a mother out there that had to explain to her kids, yeah, your, your father, unfortunately 
unfortunately passed away in a nutty putty cave. Oh, Do you no. want that to be you? But I digress because everything I've told you up until now has been the surface of Quud. What does that mean? It means I've played long enough to see the game for what it really is. A Ooh. series of challenges that appear impossible until you realize every problem has a solution. And Ooh. once the puzzle pieces click together, you'll reach that epiphany that it's the entire system puzzle. is by design words and designed colors. to be subverted. The sandbox wants you to break it. It wants you to achieve your goal in the most creative way possible. Let me tell you about the real caves of quud. For a start, we need a lot of money. We don't mm. have time to earn it, so we're going to print it. Welcome to the lava economy, because lava, lava is extremely economy. valuable. One dram equals 16 drams of water. Okay, great. However, we can only store it safely inside a one dram glass file. A water skin holds 64, but starts burning the moment you put it in. Previously, I could extinguish the fire caused by the lava by pouring water on it, and leaving the water skin perfectly intact for me to sell. The developers patched this out and reduced no. the value of lava twice. But that didn't oh, stop no. me. Instead, I streamlined the process. Normally, fungal colonies produce lava, which is a good source of early money and parasitic infections. But their capacity <laughs> is limited. We need industrial quantities. You need to find and identify a thermal grenade and a freeze grenade. Any huh. You exchange stuff using water? But alternatively, you could just use lava for bigger stonks. I feel like this game is uh, unnecessarily complicated. I mean, aside from all the text and all the visual... Mm, visual beauty in it. I don't know. I feel like there's... Uh, ah, there's I feel like there's a better interface for this game. You know what I mean? Although, maybe the main reason why the game looks like this... It's because of what he said earlier in the video. Like, you could play this game in the office and no one will suspect anything. Because it doesn't look like a game. You can use gems, lab I patched. Mmm. So, hello. Hope you're doing well. Generation works, but a Mark Free is preferable. Next, we need bananas. Either mm, six bananas. day stilt or banana grove. Preserve it into sun dried bananas. Cook it. Gain psychometry. Use psychometry to read the early history of every artifact. Bananas could make you read about history. It's gonna make you learn the history of artifacts if you eat bananas. <gasps> enlightening. The bananas is the cause of enlightenment. Ooh, that's good. I should eat more bananas. In your inventory without paying for a <laughs> to know more disc about the world. Again. Get tinkering to level one so you can disassemble scrap and craft grenades. Go to the desert oh. canyon, locate a nice pocket of shale rock. Quick trivia what's the melting point of shale rock? About a I, thousand I don't degrees. Know. Chuck thermal grenades in quick succession until it melts. Congratulations, we've just made lava. Fill Ooh. as many water skins as you can hold and throw them far away. Now refrigerate them. Congratulations, oh. you have now freeze dried your lava. Head back to Lava. whatever you want with the federal reserve forever printing lava we don't have to worry about money anymore <laughs> next we need to make game lava. liquids are important to this game liquids are vital liquids also mix together and get tainted in the process would you like it if a woman oh. stepped in your bowl of cereal don't answer that at the six day i was about to say don't answer that <laughs> no there's always a fate joke in these videos Still, there's a merchant of interest. He sells liquids, sometimes exceptionally rare liquids. He's going to be the catalyst to our success. But there's one problem. He's only one man. We need more. Have a look mm -hmm. at my game. Now, let's read the names together. Icker Merchant. Clone of an Icker Merchant. Mm -hmm. Clone of a clone of an Icker Merchant. Clone of a clone. You get the idea. We're going to buy his cloning solution, pour it on his body, and watch him multiply. And oh then we're God. going to buy cloning solution from his clones to multiply them as oh well. Oh my God. Why? So we can buy more more cloning solution to duplicate any well, merchant we well, desire. What it do you do time, with them? But first, with the you have to plant your crops before you can enjoy the harvest. Now, we're going to buy our way to immortality. How? By purchasing oh. every file of neutron flux. And then, you're going to cook oh, some you buy gravity. Something from him. Neutron flux gives you a permanent plus one to your ah, armor you lost value. Me. With a one in four chance of gravitational collapse. Seth, I don't like those odds. Neither do I. Take a sphinx salt injector, stab it into your arm, Ooh. start cooking. If your body collapses under the 
weight of a neutron star go back. Because that never really happened. Because precognition is a vision of the future, not the present. And if you don't like that <laughs> theoretical timeline, you go back to a divergent point in time oh, when you okay, first okay. injected that cocktail. Walk around, live life, and try again. When the deterministic dice roll of RNG will give you the outcome you desire. Yes, this game has saves coming built into the mechanics. Reach immortality. Keep eating bananas. The potassium is good for mm. you and good for your newfound ability to craft nearly Banana. every item in the game. Next, the one and only reason I play True <laughs> is to pacify the Templars. Unique oh Templars carry God. a very special cocktail. This game is so complicated. They're Holy extremely shit. trigger happy and they have a tendency to inject it upon any sign of conflict. As a True Kin, I simply walk up to them and buy it for a pathetic sum of money. What is it? It's an injector filled with Eater Nectar. Injecting it gives you a permanent plus one to a random attribute, but that's mm. not good enough. We're going to preserve it and condense the nectar, and then we're going to use condense precognition nectar. and cook it, which gives us a one in four chance of getting plus one in all of our attributes ah. permanently. However, these are quite rare, and I can't know if I'll ever find another. So first, I find a high-level merchant, clone them repeatedly, and buy <laughs> metamorphic polygel. This is cloning oh solution my God. for just items. Cloning so now everybody. I can theoretically Holy scale shit. my character to an infinite amount of armor, infinite amount of attributes, and once I clone all the bookstores, an infinite amount of Schrodinger's pages. I mean, if you could do that in any other roguelike game, I would love that. If I could clone the merchants, ooh, that would be amazing. Because sometimes, it's not really sometimes, like most of the time, the merchants in uh, like roguelike games, they only sell one of a certain thing. Like they only sell one, uh, you know, one magazine for your gun that you use, for example, in... Uh, enter the gungeon so if you could clone the merchant so they sell more and more items i would definitely go for that or like oh my god imagine the possibilities if you could clone the merchant but what if you clone the merchant but you don't clone their inventory <laughs> there's no way <sighs> dude they should add that to all roguelikes clone the merchants yes yes the money runs out and you need more merchants. Mm. Need more merchants. I need them all. That I can use to gain an infinite amount of reputation. And still, I get one shot by a fucking rusty saw. Remember that chrome pyramid I talked about? Previously, nobody actually knew how to deal with these. Until one insane madman EMP'd the force field, charged the chrome pyramid, and with a small flick of a blade, disarmed Ooh. it. Yes, he ripped what? off the entire swarm rack. That same he swarm rack can it? be picked up and used. However, the average player can only hold a weight of about 300. This thing weighs 1,500. Oh, no. So it's we so heavy. modify it, reducing its total weight down to zero. But at this point, weight doesn't really matter. With the exact same method, I disarmed every other robot in the Deathlands and used them to craft spheres of negative weight, allowing us to effectively roleplay as a high-speed missile launcher. Oh but even God. that was still not enough. I was tired oh. of paying for goods, so I stabbed a merchant with a love injector and Ooh, robbed love them injector. blind. Then I stabbed a legendary bear, so we could improve human race relations by sharing honey and the low location of local sharing beehives. Honey, right. I also stabbed the right. Pope, made him All follow right. me back to town, and watched as he started a race riot because his I feel like stabbing a bear with love injector is gonna be similar to what happens in that Baldur's Gate trailer, you know? <laughs> you don't share honey with the bear that you injected with love injector. Come on. Come on! Give us the juicy details. Ooh! reputation with the unwashed masses was not very high. Instead, I wanted companions that don't murder everyone. So I sprayed sentience on a block of concrete and convinced the block of animated concrete to follow me into combat. I found out concrete <laughs> is not only indestructible, oh it can also hold weaponry in its hands. What the Unfortunately, hell? my companion the died when hands? I foolishly tried to slam through concrete using concrete. I oh. broke a concrete wall. I oh, lost no. a concrete friend. 
friend. No. But none of what I said even holds Concrete a candle friend. compared to being a high level You're escort. still good. Here are some examples of what you can do. Surround yourself with a permanent force field. Use instant transmission. Turn walls into instant lava. Turn brains into technique. liquid. Oh. Using your mind from the other side of the map with clairvoyance. Dominate every merchant to give you their life savings. Dominate a domesticated pig. <laughs> Put a nuclear warhead Why? in its mouth and turn it into a remote controlled suicide bomber. Oh my Split God. yourself into Poor seven pig. identical copies with identical powers and turn the screen into a living nightmare. Use ego projection. Project ego your projection. HP so high it doesn't even render in the UI. Die ego anyway. Projection. Reverse the outcome with precognition. <laughs> Follow one of the billion divergent timelines instead. Tap the mass mind. Plux. Oh, precognition means like loading your save file. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Precognition, of course. Love Injector is a great nickname, yeah. That's a good uh, gamer tag. Sentience from the universe. Reset your cooldowns and do it all over again. As you can probably tell, it was so damn powerful that the developers had to code in their own countermeasures. Now, the more powerful you are, the more others start to notice. Your psychic oh, glimmer you're being watched. increases, and other espers will come to take your mind for their own. The oh attacks no. become so They're gonna brutal, steal your the mind. burden of power so great that you might even be tempted in your moment of weakness to eat a fuck ton of humble pies. Because in this game, the bakeries are owned by Nietzsche and his pastries humble induce pie. ego death. But the player ego will forever death. subvert mm. the developer. Do you know how to end the pursuit? To stop the hunt? To escape? You have to accept first that there is no escape and allow yourself to be caught. And in the briefest of moments, you dominate Dominate your pursuer and oh. kill yourself. Your oh. old flesh is gone, but inside new flesh, your mind lives on. This what? game is truly exceptional. You can transfer your consciousness to another character. What the hell? What the hell? Exceptional, but it does have its problems. One, it's made on Unity. That's not immediately <laughs> noticeable. But when a unity. small cloud of gas accidentally falls down a pipe and has to generate 10 levels of dungeon for the sake of simulation, yeah, you're gonna notice. Two, sometimes an essential quest NPC contracts a fungal infection oh, and no. is regrettably chopped to pieces. Sometimes the sandbox breaks and you lose your progress. The game oh, no. practically expects you to use console commands to fix itself, so don't feel too bad about it. Three, most of the game is randomly generated, but you can tell immediately if a character is pre-written, because the first Tumblr fursona you meet will give you an option to ask about her neon purple hair and quirky way of talking. I like mm, the writing quirky. in this game, but come on, disliked by the water barons for her queer appearance? Really? Maybe she just looks like shit. Listen, I can respect the fact that you can self-insert your OC girlfriend, but at least give us the option of dismembering her. And four, oh my God. I want more. <laughs> There's not enough of this world. And you're spending too much he of your time more. banning me off your Discord oh. for making reasonable gameplay suggestions. Initial well, he's spamming them. <laughs> he's spamming them. Holy shit. <laughs> this man is insane. Gameplay suggestions. Do you love a game so much you go into the official Discord and spam the devs? <laughs> Jeez. Initially, I dismissed this game as overly simplistic. I come back now to tell you how deep it goes. Even with a time given, I've only told you a fraction of what I know. It should be noted that the writing in this game is fantastic. There's so much lore, like how the banana ranchers in this game are plants themselves. It's oh. plants enslaving plants. Oh it's my plantation God. owners That's beating big. other plantation owners. They just work up the hierarchy. It's like my slave name used to be whipped cream. Now I'm whipped pink cream. The music in this game is very charming and sets the tone that you're in a completely alien environment where nearly every rock, tree, and flower is very much alive. It's a beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, and janky mess of a game. And despite being in early access, it's already given me hundreds of hours of enjoyment. As such, <laughs> I give it a completely random yet quantifiably high score, which can only be expressed on a graphical calculator. Ooh. It's fantastic. It's not for everyone and it's incredibly neurotic, but if that sounds yeah. 
Hope seems something like you it. enjoy. Give it a try. Seems As very always, neurotic. More content to come, so stay tuned. That content will consist of more than four pixels. A warm thanks more than to the four many pixels. members of the Merchant Guild <laughs> generously good. funding and bankrolling these videos. Except this one is completely free because I can't make you pay money for abstract text adventures. You're all truly wonderful. Take care and have a good one. <laughs> oh my god. Well, there we have it. Caves of Cood. Cook. Cook review. I watched it. I think this was recommended like two months ago. Thanks for recommending the video. Okay. Yes? The Gacha Gods love Seth for some reason. Every time I spin the wheel and somebody recommends a Seth video, the wheel chooses it. Hmm. This is the ending song. Ending song. This is the ending song.